Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming or battle-related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. Do the format out of the way real quick. If you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. The first question for today comes from Patrick, and it is, do you personally think that the shotguns are still too strong in Battlefield 4? Uh, surprisingly, I have been getting a lot of these types of questions over the last couple of days. Many people still thinking that, hey, shotguns are too good, they're overpowered, something of that nature. And while, yeah, they're, they're really good, uh, from a balanced perspective, these are weapons that are really hard to nail down. Uh, the reason why I say this is that Battlefield has a lot of different combat situations. Uh, you got TDM, which focuses more on close quarter combat. Then you have maps that are gigantic like Gold Mud Railways. And you need pretty much every weapon to at least do moderately well on all of them. And so, in my opinion, shotguns on, let's say, Conquest Large, are in a really good place right now. If you know what you're doing and you have a good understanding of how to move around the map appropriately, uh, the shotguns are fairly acceptable on those large scale maps. The thing is though, is that as soon as you go into a smaller map like TDM or you're playing Domination, uh, that's where things uh, get a little bit more crazy. And so the tricky part is, how do they balance a weapon that I would say is mediocre at best on some large conquest maps or on most game modes, but then is all of a sudden dominant on, or not really necessarily dominant, but really ramps up the power on other game modes? Like, how do you balance all of those things out? And so in my opinion, the shotguns are at least in a decent place right now. Maybe they could use a couple of adjustments to slightly reduce their power at medium range combat. Uh, this is one complaint that I have noticed noticed is that they do outperform most PDWs at medium range engagements. If you get one shot by a shotgun at medium range combat when you're using a PDW, it can be very frustrating. You would assume PDWs would outperform shotguns in those situations, but they don't seem to, and so maybe they could reduce the power in that category. But as soon as we start to nerf them again, they're going to go back to being completely useless like they were before that big update a couple of months ago. So <laughs> if you can't tell, it's very challenging to balance this, in, especially considering how large of a scope that Battlefield is. And so I'd like to get your guys' take on this. Now that we've had a couple of months to soak in these patch notes, do you think that a nerf is in order? Do you think that they are fine as they are? Or would you like to see them get a little bit of an upgrade? Let me know down below. The next question comes from Fabian and it is, what do you think about the fact that there is no spawn cooldown in Star Wars Battlefronts? In my opinion, kills are not as rewarding as they should be because the player you just killed a second ago is able to respawn immediately after you shot him in the face with a blaster. Uh, this is also something that I noticed during the beta, but I think that's exactly what DICE is going for. They're creating a casual, fast-paced first-person shooter. They want you to get immediately back into the action. They don't want there to be any downtime. They want you just to simply have fun. Go in, get kills with your blaster, die, and then be right back into the action a half second later. That's honestly, I think, one of the main reasons why I, and I think a lot of other people, were just enjoying the beta. It's just fun. There isn't really any penalty for dying. You get right back into the thick of combat, and it's just a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, it does lead to some balancing issues that I hope that DICE will address though. Uh, you allude to it in your question, and that is the situation where if you're working with a friend, uh, if you die, you can let him know, hey, I just got taken out by this guy on the left side of the mountain. He can kind of stray away from the action for just a half a second, make sure that he's not in combat, and then you're right back in the action half a second later, and you can gang up on that guy and take him out immediately. And well, I guess that is a form of teamwork, uh, being able to spawn in instantaneously on a teammate that's right into the thick of combat uh, could lead to some frustrating moments. And so I think really the only way that DICE is going to be able to maybe work around this problem, and many people might not even think that it is a problem, is just to make sure that the in-combat spawn uh, doesn't happen as frequently. And so if you're getting shot at, or maybe if your teammate is shooting at the enemy, maybe you're not going to be able to spawn in on your teammate. That's one way to work around it. Uh, but for the most part, other than those situations, I think that's just simply comes down to the very charm that is Star Wars Battlefront. At the end of the day, it is a fast-paced first-person shooter, and they want to keep it that way. So I, I, I don't see any dramatic changes to the spawn system happening. 
The next question comes from Nate, and it is, what do you think about a system where once you reach rank 100 in Battlefield 4, you start to get coins that you can spend on special field upgrades? The higher the upgrade, the better the bonus. Recons, for example, could upgrade their stealth so that you don't have footsteps and stuff to that nature. What do you think? I'm gonna go uh, with a no, at least the way that you've described things. I think having more customization can be a very interesting addition in a battlefield. I mean, if there was a way that you could tailor field upgrades to your playstyle a little bit more, I'm completely cool with that. Uh, earlier today, for example, I was running around on the new Dragon Valley map on the CTE, playing as the engineer, and I thought to myself, why do I have to make the choice between having more rockets or having uh, ammo and sprints? I, I want more ammo, that's the that's a main function of a first person shooter, and having to make that choice, especially if I want to have more rockets, I also have to have that in tandem with being able to place down more mines. I never use mines. Mines, in my opinion, are useless on most maps. Most people avoid them completely, and so I would much rather have the option to maybe tailor them a little bit more. And while I understand this becomes much more difficult for dice to balance out, as soon as you give the player more options or ways to customize their character and tailor the field upgrades to their liking, you're of course going to have some field upgrade locks or field upgrade uh, customization combos that are going to become very popular. So I understand that becomes a problem, but even still, I wouldn't mind if there was a few more ways to customize. The thing with your suggestion, though, is that not only does it take things, I think, way too far, uh, but also this would be terrible for newer players. Uh, you have to remember that it takes a really, really long time to get to rank 100. I know a lot of you have already reached that milestone because Battlefield 4 has been out for almost two years. <laughs> we have to remember that if the game, let's say, was out for only uh, six months, someone came in for the very first time and they started to go against players that were already rank 100, but now they had these really cool upgrades where their field upgrades were like five times better than the ones that you have right now, uh, that's going to be a slap in the face to those newer players and it's just going to discourage them from continuing to play this multiplayer game. You do not want to discourage newer players. You want them to stay. You want them to thrive because that's the only way that your multiplayer game is going to last longer than a couple of months. And so it's for that very reason, alongside the fact that I don't know if we want to have uber awesome field upgrades that you can make even better, I, I just do not think that is the direction that we should be taking for Battlefield 4. Uh, who knows? Maybe you guys will completely disagree with me. Maybe you guys think this is the best thing ever. But I think that that is pushing things too far. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. But until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.